Hi there and thanks for joining me. My name's Scott. I'll tell you, 2020 has been kind of a terrible year, but we finally got some really interesting information about a vaccine against COVID-19, and I'm gonna bet that you've got some questions. All of my friends and family have sure asked me what I think about these, and since I'm a pharmacist, it seems reasonable. Hey, on the other side of this, I'm gonna give you some information about those mRNA vaccines because I'll bet that you too have some questions about it. I'll start the ball rolling, I'll give you an overview, and we can talk about that more in the comments. Stay tuned, I'll see you in just a second. And welcome back. So one of the first questions that I get asked is, how do these mRNA vaccines work in the first place? Well, I'll tell you, to really make, uh, help you understand that, we have to go back and get a hook to hang this on and activate some memory traces that'll help you remember this a little bit better. I want you to think about it like this. In my little example right here, if you imagine that my blank wall is your brain and I can throw the towel at it and you'll notice that the towel isn't sticking. Well, that's because there's no hook to hang it on. So if that towel represents new information that you're trying to learn, if you're not familiar with it, nothing's happening. It's not hanging up there. But if I can help you find a hook to hang that new information on, and now you see that. I throw the towel up on the wall, it's going to land on that hook, and there we go. That's going to stick around. And that's what I want to do with these images, to help us provide a framework. So as I'm talking about what this mRNA is, you've got an idea, and you can start to be more comfortable about the technology. Let's keep moving on. So, we've got our cell here, all right? And the green outline is just the cell membrane. You don't have to worry about that. Just understand that I'm identifying that I'm, anything inside is what I want to deal with. In the black circle, you'll see those purple squiggles. And those purple squiggles in that black border represent the nucleus and the DNA inside of it. Now, these vaccines aren't doing anything there. We want to stay out of the DNA. The DNA is the thing that makes you you, and I don't want to interrupt and cause anything to be different, because you're fine. Let's not mess that up. So we want to keep a item, we want to make our vaccine something that isn't going to interfere with that. And that's where mRNA comes into play. Now in my diagram, I've got those really fancy orange squiggles. And you'll notice that those are just hanging out inside the cell, but they're not in the nucleus. That's going to be my mRNA, my messenger RNA. Those are going to help me make the little things that I need to make to become immune to the coronavirus and I'm going to use those brown blobs as the factory. So the mRNA has the message, they've got the instructions, and those are going to tell those brown factories what we need to go ahead and produce, and those brown factories are going to go ahead and help us make it. And then, things get a little more complicated, but let's go ahead and stop right there for right now. You're going to have some questions about this. Let's take a minute, I'll see if I hit some of the points. You might be wondering, how are we going to get this new mRNA inside the cell? That's an excellent question, and that's actually one of the most fascinating parts of this. We're going to use something called a lipid nanopolymer. That's right. That sounds pretty fancy. And I'm going to talk about that in more detail in this next little segment. Stay around. So now that we've seen how we're going to go ahead and get that mRNA into the cell, What's it going to do for us once it's in there? Well, now this is why the whole technology is so much faster than normal vaccines. Part of the problem and part of where a lot of your anxiety is likely to be coming from is that this happens so quickly. Well, surely someone had to be doing something untoward. There has to be some shenanigans afoot. Well, actually, not really. So I've looked through all of the independent papers. I've looked through all of the scientific material that's out there as a responsible practitioner of pharmacy. And what I found is the whole reason this technology is able to go faster is it skips a really big, long step. I don't have to grow any virus up. As long as I know what feature of that virus I want to print, the proteins can be printed. All I have to do is get that segment of mRNA that will make those spike proteins. I don't have to spend two years growing up enough of the coronavirus infected cells that I can then go make a traditional vaccine on. I take the part I want, 
print it out, wrap it in the lipid, pop it into your immune cells, boom, I've got a vaccine. So that cuts out a huge amount of time because I don't have to wait for biological material to grow. Think about it like this. You get pregnant, that takes nine months. There's not much of a shortcut to it. This one, there is, and that's handy. So now that we've got the mRNA inside your cells, inside your immune cells, what are they going to do? Well, I mentioned earlier in our hook video that that little brown factory is going to come along and it's going to take raw materials that I've got on the left side here, and it's going to look at the instructions and it's going to pull those raw materials and start assembling those. And what I've got coming out on the right side is the finished product, and that is, in this particular case, the spike protein for coronavirus. We're going to use that then to help educate your immune system. Now earlier when I was talking about we're going to use a lipid nanopolymer around this messenger RNA. Well that lipid nanopolymer is going to be a little more able to get into immune cells than other cells. I don't want to burden you with a whole bunch of details about it, but think about it like a letter and then you put an address on it. It's not quite as sophisticated as an address on a letter, but it's pretty close. So that most of the vaccine is going to end up in an immune cell whose job it is to educate the rest of your immune system. Now, once we've gone ahead and we've made those spike proteins, what are we going to do with them? Well, that cell is going to use some machinery to move those spike proteins up onto its surface. And when this particular cell puts a spike protein up, it's a signal for other cells in your immune system to come learn. Hey, I've got something new to show you. Come take a look at it. When you find it, kill it. And that is how this whole vaccine works. So we don't have to worry about growing up all of these copies of the virus. We've taken the part of the virus that we know doesn't change, makes it different from anything else. We've helped your cells just produce a whole lot of signals to help educate your immune system about it so your immune system can go around and kill it dead. And that is pretty cool. It's also why this goes a lot faster and why that mRNA platform is so powerful for helping combat infectious diseases like SARS-CoV-2. Now, this was just a big overview of how these vaccines work, and you're going to have a whole lot more questions. And I would love to take your questions and help build those into one of my next videos so that you can be as confident and comfortable as possible when your turn to get these vaccines comes around. I'm Scott. I'm a pharmacist. This has been the inaugural episode of Coffee with a Pharmacist. I hope to see you soon.